Hey guys, my name is Natalie and welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be about languages and I actually decided to make this video after the amazing feedback I received on my previous video about languages where I speak uh, six languages. I will leave the links somewhere here so you can check it out later if you're interested. And uh, the thing is that after I made this video so many people reached out and uh, up until today people write comments asking me uh, about methods I use to learn a language, about my tips or tricks I use. So I decided to make another video about this and uh, if you ask me, uh, language learning is such a broad topic that you cannot possibly cover it all in one video or even in 10 or 100 videos. I can literally talk about this endlessly and there are a lot of aspects to cover. But today I wanted to focus on certain tips I would like to give people who want to start learning a new language or who are already in the process of learning a language and are just looking for some methods or tips. But I wanted to emphasize it once again that everyone's journey is really different, so something that works for me might not work for you, because we're all different, we have different lifestyles, different habits, we have different time schedules, so it's really, really individual. But I hope that these tips and methods uh, will be useful for you. So the first thing I would really advise everyone to do is to create a good study plan. I really think that a good study plan is just everything if it comes to language learning. Uh, and not only language learning, generally I think in life when we want to achieve some goal, we need to create a plan, we need to write down the steps or at least have them in our mind. Uh, so it will help us to kind of see what we need to do in order to achieve that goal in terms of time, in terms of effort, so on. It doesn't have to be some gigantic goal, it can be some small goal, for example, what you want to achieve till the end of this month or like in, uh, let's say, three months or half a year, it depends. But you can set a big goal and then break it down into small goals. For example, when I create a study plan for myself, I always uh, choose a goal I want to achieve, let's say, this month. Then I'm writing down what kind of things I need to do for that. For example, should I focus on listening, on writing, speaking? And then I'm writing the steps which I need to take in order to achieve those mini goals. For example, in order to improve my speaking, I need to find a language partner or I need to speak, uh, practice, let's say, for half an hour um, twice a week and so on. It depends on language and on the level of the language you're learning. Uh, besides time, you also need to focus on the resources, for example, you can write down for yourself, like on certain days you will be using uh, audio resources, you will be do listening and practicing reading, on other days, let's say, you'll be practicing writing or speaking, so it really depends, you can choose whatever you want to do and what works for you. And this will help you to track your progress, because sometimes uh, you become really dismotivated when you don't see the progress, especially when you're already, let's say, intermediate, upper intermediate level, and you feel like you already have some level, but you kind of don't feel the constant progress like you felt it at the beginning when you just start learning a new language and every day you learn something new and you see how you improve. Uh, so this kind of mini goals really help you see that you actually achieved some goals which you set for yourself, kind of uh, helps you to stay motivated. After you created a good study plan, the next step I would recommend you to take is to choose very good learning materials. And learning materials are super important, guys, especially if you're learning a language by yourself without help of a teacher who would uh, find the uh, resources and materials for you, right? Uh, so in order to find good materials, of course, you need to do a research on the internet, but there are so many uh, different materials, audios, videos, movies, uh, books, you can choose any type of materials that work for you, but choosing them right is very important. For example, I personally think that choosing too many materials at the same time, it's not very good because you're kind of getting distracted and you can't focus on uh, one thing. So you do too many things at the same time and it might be not that uh, effective. So I myself prefer to choose, uh, for example, one or two things for listening, one thing for reading and uh, one type of exercise for writing, let's say. So another thing which is very important to me when I choose my learning material is making sure that I really like them and that they are interesting to me. Because uh, I've tried using materials which were supposedly good, but they were not interesting to me, they were boring and it made the whole learning process boring 
and uh, sooner or later you will give up because you don't enjoy it. In the end of the day, you're learning a language uh, in order to be able to speak, to enjoy the process. So it's not like uh, you force yourself to do it. You shouldn't be forcing yourself to do it because I believe in this way you won't succeed. So it's very important to have materials that actually trigger your interest. If it comes to, for example, reading, you can always choose a book which you really like and read it in the language which you're learning. Uh, if it comes to practicing speaking with a native, you can always discuss topics that are interesting to you. So in this way, you will always kind of uh, stay motivated and you will be always uh, enjoying the process, which is very important. The third tip I would like to give you guys is to create a routine and stay consistent. So consistency is really the key if it comes to language learning and I cannot emphasize it more. I've learned from my personal experience that when you're not consistent, when you're taking big breaks, it's the worst. It's really the worst for your language learning progress because it feels like you just forget everything or maybe not everything, but a lot of things you learned before and you have to start from the beginning and then you get angry, you are getting irritated, you feel like you're doing the thing for the second time, you're doing it from the beginning and it kind of dismotivates you. And that's why routine and consistency are so important. You cannot count on your motivation. We are all motivated at the beginning when you want to learn a language, you're inspired by someone or something and you see everything in uh, pink colors. But when it actually gets to uh, learning a language and you realize how much time and effort you need to put to it, then sometimes motivation leaves us and it's not really reliable if it comes to learning a language. So you need to substitute your motivation with something more stable, which is a routine. There are lots of books like, for example, Atomic Habits, which talk about the importance of routines in our life and how they help us organize our life and achieve our goals. So once you make something part of your routine, then you stick to it and then after some time you really see the result. This is the only way you can achieve your long-term goals. And if it comes to languages, routine is really, really crucial because learning a language is not the one month or three months uh, thing. It's a very, very long time consuming and effort consuming process. And a lot of people are actually scared by this word routine because it sounds like something bad, something negative. But the truth is you don't have to study for two to three hours a day and kill your brain and get tired. Not at all. A lot of people have work studies or they simply don't have time for learning language for two or three hours a day and it's totally okay. I myself think that it's much more efficient to study for shorter periods of time, but more frequently during a week. For example, for 30 minutes, even 15 minutes a day, but every day is better than, let's say, once a week for three hours or four hours. Because when you do it consistently, when you do it every day, this language kind of becomes a part of your daily life, a part of your routine. So you constantly have contact with this language and you hear it or you use it. So it kind of becomes a part of your life. To tell the truth, in my case, I prefer to study for a bit longer. Uh, like 30 minutes per day doesn't really work for me because I feel like it's not enough. Uh, I'm just getting started and getting into the mood and then 30 minutes are gone. So I really try to make it at least one hour a day or usually I'm trying to do it more. But I totally understand that lots of people just don't have time uh, to study every day for an hour or two. So it's definitely much better to do at least 15 to 30 minutes a day than not do it all. That's for sure. So once again, guys, create a routine and stick to it. And I know that a lot of people struggle with finding time to study, but I really think that if you really analyze all the things, all the activities you do during your day, you will be surprised how much time we usually waste on some random things like checking phone, uh, watching some random videos. So I think if you really set it as a goal to learn a language, you can always find 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour uh, to study your language. And it doesn't have to be taking a book and writing exercises. You can make it fun. For example, instead of watching a movie in your mother tongue, you can watch a movie in the language you're learning with subtitles in your mother tongue. Or for example, you can uh, listen to a podcast while you're doing your workout, while you're on the gym and so on. For example, I myself always listen to Spanish podcasts when I do my workouts on 
that machine. <laughs> so it's kind of uh, my fixed routine. Whenever I'm doing the machine, I always listen to the podcast and it kind of became a part of my routine. It's already a habit and I don't need to think too much about it. So the first tip I would like to give you guys is to focus on all four aspects of a language, meaning speaking, listening, reading and writing. And I know that it sounds hard and it sounds like it requires a lot of time, but it doesn't mean that you need to do all of these things every day. You can really prioritize. For example, some people are better at speaking, but they have problems with writing. Then maybe you should spend a little bit more time on writing or maybe you are very good with your vocabulary, but uh, when it comes to speaking, you don't feel that confident. So maybe you should find a native speaker with whom you can practice. It really depends, but the key point is that you really need to focus on all of them. Because I think that no matter what your language learning goal is, if you want to be fluent in this language, you need to be good at all four of these aspects. And you can choose different methods to improve each of them. There are tons of options and again, it's individual, so you can use the ones that fit you and that you find more efficient. But in my case, for example, in order to practice my speaking skills, I always try to find native speakers with whom I can practice, we discuss different topics and uh, it helps me to improve my vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, basically everything. It's really the best. And I know that a lot of people uh, find it hard to find native speakers, especially if you don't live in a country where you're surrounded by natives. But there are a lot of platforms nowadays. There is internet which helps you to find people all around the world who are willing to connect. You can find uh, language exchange partners uh, through Facebook groups. You can use different applications like, for example, HelloTalk and so on. So there are many, many ways and you just need to do a little bit of research. Uh, if it comes to improving your reading skills, it really depends on your level. Because if you're a beginner, for example, it might be hard for you to read a book in this language. So in this case, you can find some content creators on Instagram, on Twitter, it doesn't matter. And you can follow their daily posts. And in this way, you'll be able to practice your reading and improve your vocabulary also. Or you can find some small articles on the internet. Uh, and so on. There are many ways actually and you just need to do a little bit of research. If you're intermediate, for example, or upper intermediate, then you can already try reading books in the language you're learning and uh, if you feel that it's hard for you, then you can always find an adapted version of that book, uh, which is uh, written in a simplified language, so it will be easier for you to understand. For example, I'm learning Polish now and it's still too hard for me to read books in Polish, so I usually tend to focus on short texts and dialects, which I find in my textbooks that I use, and uh, that works for me. I would just recommend you not to choose too long text or too hard text because sometimes it can be dismotivating and disappointing when you realize that you don't understand most of it and it can discourage you from uh, proceeding with your language learning. If it comes to practicing your writing skills, I would say that there are lots of ways to do that and you can choose the one you like. For example, you can start writing a diary where you will be writing about your daily routine and activities or you can find yourself a pen pal with whom you will be exchanging short messages. Or if you already have a language partner, you can write short messages to them and ask them to check if everything is correct and so on and so on. One more good way to practice your writing skills and actually listening skills at the same time is to listen to a video or a movie and try to write down what you hear. For example, you listen to one sentence or two sentences and then you write it down. And I actually was using this way when I was learning Chinese and it really helped. And if it comes to improving your listening skills, the answer is pretty straightforward. Just listen. You can listen to videos, to movies, you can practice with language partner again and listen how they talk so your ear gets used to pronunciation and also you can pick up new vocabulary in this way. Generally from my experience, even if you have good vocabulary and good knowledge of grammar, you can still struggle to speak. Speaking is really one of the most challenging parts if it comes to learning a language. Some people feel confident, some people feel shy, or it's just different when you talk uh, to a native speaker. It's not the same when you're reading or writing a text or when you're listening to a movie or video because you feel like you understand a lot and you feel like you know all these words, but when it comes to talking, then it's getting harder. Uh, so I would say that besides 
practicing with native speaker, you can also use different ways to improve your skills, especially if you don't have a native speaker next to you. One of these ways, which I was using myself, is talking to yourself. And guys, it sounds weird, but it works. You can really talk to yourself for 10, 15 minutes a day. It's just basically thinking out loud, just thinking about your plans, uh, for this day or thinking about what you have been doing during this day doesn't matter You can also choose some specific topic and just reflect on that and talk to yourself That really helps and I have one more tip for those who want to improve their speaking skills and in particular their pronunciation Which can be tricky sometimes do shadowing exercise I don't know if you're familiar with shadowing exercises and it's pretty straightforward. This technique is very easy. You basically just need to listen to audio or video and repeat after the native speaker. So you, for example, listen to a couple of sentences and then you repeat. Or you listen to one sentence, then you stop the video or the audio and you repeat after the native speaker. This really helps to get used to the language, to get used to how it sounds and improve your pronunciation and it really works. Okay guys, that will be all for today. Thank you very much for watching and I really hope that the tips and methods I discussed in this video will be helpful for you and you will implement them in your language learning routine. In case you want to know more about my language learning routine, about the materials or methods I use to learn a specific language, or in case you have any questions related to languages or in general, you can always ask me in the comments or write to me on Instagram and I will try to respond to all of your messages. Thank you very much for watching this video, for staying with me and see you in the next video.